What's going on boys and girls? What's up world? Austin John plays here and welcome back to Link's Awakening where we have quite a bit of adventuring to do. If you haven't seen the last few episodes, I highly recommend you check them out. And today we're gonna be finishing up a couple of things. We have 22 pieces of heart, 39 secret seashells. And in this episode, we're gonna make our way to the raft ride, which is over here. I'm gonna be going through the two different strategies for that. We also need to make our way back to Mave Village for a few little bits of side questing. We need to complete the trade sequence and there's a few other items and miscellaneous things that we have to go grab. From the Martha's Bay warp point, which is right over here. Well, first I wanna point out with the hook shot, you can hit the cucumbers and then you can slice them and you don't take electric damage, which is really nice. We're gonna head down here. Now we may have explored here before, not able to do anything, that's fine. We're gonna rock's feather and slice a piece of grass. You're gonna fall in, that's fine. Repeat the process. And we're gonna head down here. Inside of here, we're gonna grab ourselves a piece of heart and progress all the way through to the end. Ow. And head down these stairs right here. And this is going to be the second little devil. There's some magic powder on there, and I think this guy upgrades our bombs? Yes, more bombs. Now, if this is your first one that you've experienced, he's going to upgrade your magic powder. But if this is your second one, then it's your bombs. And your third one is arrows. The first one was found back in the mysterious forest at this rock right here. So you should have gone there already. Next, from the Animal Village Warp Point, we are going to be doing all of the trade sequence right now and completely finishing it. Head here to Martha's Bay. We're gonna head straight down. Now, up until this point, you should have your trade sequence item as being the mermaid scale right here. If not, then uh, then you got some catching up to do. For the newly acquired hookshot, we're going to hookshot into this box right here. Hit the sea pickle. And in front of this statue, we're going to hit A. We put the missing scale into the statue. And it opens up a secret passageway. Oh, snap. Down here, there's going to be invisible enemies. That's fine. Just swing your sword, walk forward. And this magnifying lens is the very end of the trade sequence. There's no more trading to do. And it's going to reveal many things you couldn't see before, including all the enemies that were in this room. Now the magnifying lens actually does a few really important things for us. And here at the animal village, we are going to go to the uprightmost house. And before there was an invisible guy in here and we can see him now. He's looking directly at us. Hey, you can see me? You must have a magnifying glass. And he gives us a secret seashell and tells us something very important right here. Hey, you should head out to the cave at uh, Taranbo Shores. Yep. Sure am. But before t we head to Tarambo Shores, we're going to head to the left side of the Animal Village. And we're gonna head all the way around back where we found that small passageway that led us to that piece of heart. Remember I told you about that one time ever that we could use bomb arrows? Well, now it's time to go ahead and get that. Not bomb arrows, but the, uh, the place where we used the bomb arrows. Which, oh, the rock regenerated, great. So arrows, bombs, bomb arrow. And we're gonna hook shot there and grab this last piece of heart in this cave. And that brings us up to 14 hearts. In the original game, that was the maximum amount of hearts that you were able to have. However, that's been increased to 20. So we still have quite a bit more hearts to get. Now at this point, you should have 40 secret seashells and 40 is actually the magic number for the sword upgrade. So we can make our way to the seashell mansion, hop onto the pedestal, and we're going to fill this up to the point of 40 secret seashells. Raise your sword overhead. I shall grant you new power. Whoa, it went from red to gold. You got the Koholent sword. You should put your name on it right away. I don't remember exactly what the 50 seashell reward is. I remember it's pretty lackluster. Oh, I remember what it is. It's, um, you get some rupees. And then you get a thing for Dombe. Great, we're gonna head to Martha's Bay. Now that we have the sword upgrade, like I said in the last episode, 
I don't know if that stacks with the shirt. Oh, also when our health is full, we shoot a sword beam, which is super sweet. For that reason alone, it's definitely worth it. And here at Toronto Shores, just south of where the monkey is located, right here. If you come down here and place a bomb right there, we can head inside. And this man is known as the Boomerang Trader, or Boomerang Dealer. If you talk to him, he says, I found a good item washed up on the beach. I'll trade it for you with what you have in your X or Y button. There's only really one item that you can trade, which is your shovel. Like if I try to trade my rocks feather right now, he's like, don't give me that item. How about something else? So I'm going to trade him my shovel and we're going to get the boomerang, which is actually one of the best items in the game. Now, contrary to the original game, you were able to trade back, you would lose the boomerang and you would get the shovel. However, now you could just buy the shovel back for 300 rupees and there you go. Now you have both items, your boomerang and the shovel. The reason that you can keep the shovel so easily as opposed to the original game is there's still more secret seashells that we have to go get. But the boomerang is one of the best items in the game. It not only does it function very similar to sort of the hookshot and or the bow and arrow, but it can also attack certain enemies that you weren't able to attack before. Namely the, um, the little electric balls that are always in the dungeons and such a pain to deal with. That one-shots them, and then they turn into fairies, which is pretty awesome. From the prairie, equip your hookshot, and we're going to be heading down to an area that you may have seen before, but has previously been inaccessible. And now we're going to hookshot into that tree stump. And down here, you have to read this sign, and this entire area runs on you reading these signs in the correct order. If you read them in the wrong order, then you have to start over again. And when it says go down, you'll be facing the back of this sign, and it says the writing is on the other side. So read the other side. Go this way. Go this way. This way. Destroy the boxes. Go north. Now remember what tile that was on. Go to the right. Now it's important to note that you see that sign there? That's not the sign that it's intending. So if you approach the side of a sign, that's incorrect. So you bypass that sign and you'd be reading this one. Now we go south. To the right. Up. Left. Down. Right. Again. We're approaching the side of this sign, so not that sign. We need to go to this sign right here. Down. Left. Not that sign. Great! You did it! Your reward is to the right! Our reward is a staircase that drained all that water. And down here is a giant frog. Now, this frog is going to teach us a song, and he's going to charge 300 rupees for us to learn this song. His name is Mamu. You may recognize him from an old Mario game. And, uh, let's listen to a song. Oh boy, this is a pretty hot track right here. You've been a wonderful audience. No encores, croak. And we learn the frog song of soul. It can even liven up unliving things. This is actually a very important quest item for us to have later in the game. And we're going to talk about that later. Here back at Mave Village, we have a couple of things that we need to do. First, I didn't turn in the cheap cheap figure. And Grandpa gets this. He gets all the fishing related enemies from Super Mario. Oop. Back in the trendy game. There's the blooper figure. And the blooper figure is one of the more difficult ones to get. I think I'm going to wait until green. Now. Oh, I was slightly to the right, but that should work. Nice. That is a nice firm grab. That blooper is not going anywhere. And the blooper goes in Grandpa's house right next to the hearth. Great. His collection's complete. You have all the fish now. He does give us unique dialogue for that. And the shop now has chamber stones that are very, very expensive. There's a lot of these. I think he sells like six or eight of them. So that's sort of like end game farming for you. Chamber stones. After getting the magnifying glass, 
You see that glistening in the middle of the pond? That means that there's now unique things that we can catch here. And also, I think the the biggest fish is now available, the blue one at the bottom. And boom, right there we have cheap cheeps and bloopers. The cheap cheeps and bloopers actually have unique movements. When the cheap cheep gets near the top of the water, he'll jump up. And if you press A at any point during that, he will get away. So for the blooper, he does a motion that goes up. And it's not very long, and it's not really that out of the way, although he is hard to reel in in the first place. And it's important to not hit A when he does his up jump. The nice part about it is he'll jump up into you and kind of end it a little bit early. Wow, a 35 inch, 50 rupees, a blooper, huh? Good one, I'll hook you up with a new lure for that. Now we get the heavyweight lure. This is for fishies who live in the bottom of the pond. Oh boy. I, I zoned out to zone back in and that is a big blooper. That might actually be exactly what we're looking for. Oh boy. Look at that big boy. He looks like he's eating that fish. It's 45 inches. We get 60 rupees for that, and this is the first time that we landed one of that size, and we get a secret seashell. I believe there's only one more secret seashell that we get from him, so it seems like only catching the large blooper right now is the only thing that we can do with the, uh, the fishing shore, because there's a large fish, and he shows up later. The exact criteria, again, is escaping me. It might be after the next dungeon once we get the more powerful bracelet toward the end of the game. Anyways, right now we're going to backtrack to this heart right here. And oh, this stump that we have passed so many times. Now we can finally enter it and get all of the items. A purple rupee. And a piece of heart. From the Seashell Mansion, we are going to make our way north back toward where the castle is. And over here is a pretty neat thing. This is something that in the original game you access much later with a uh, the chicken companion. However, in this game, they included this stump here so you can long shot to it, hook shot to it. And there's a secret seashell. They added the functionality of having that there because without the companion, you could totally miss that and never ever collect it. Now from the war point here at Tall Tall Heights, we're gonna make our way to the right. And this is, well, it's not the first time that we could access the raft ride, just there wasn't really much of a point to in the past. Also, these stairs right here come from down here. You'll see why we didn't do that in a minute. But here at this house is the raft ride. Speak to this guy over here. And the raft ride is 100 rupees, which is kind of expensive. And however, opposed to the original game, there's a raid and there's a race. The raid does not have a time limit, and you get to go wherever you want and collect a whole bunch of stuff. And the race, obviously, you race to the end and try to get there as fast as possible. First, we're going to do the raid. The ra You could have come here before and done this no problem, and it's not that fast, but the hookshot makes it super duper fast to do everything. You could also go against the current, which is important here, and you're going to want to have your Rock's Feather equipped, so... We can always head up, collect the rupees. Each of these is 20 rupees, which is much better than it was in the original game. I believe it was only five rupees each time. Now, if you want to come here for rupees, you're more than welcome to. But there's also some unique treasures that we have to get here. And you're also going to learn about a sideways hook shot. There we go that'll nudge you into those little crevices that you couldn't reach. Now right up here is a secret seashell. You can walk off, use your shovel, equip your hookshot back, trust me. This right here is a secret seashell that you get, uh, I think in the next dungeon or the one after it. Either way, you cannot access it from the overworld, which seems weird, but is a pretty neat feature, and it's one of two times that that's implemented in the game. If you have a good amount of patience, this is a fantastic way to get rupees. 
I don't think it's faster than the crane game. I'm gonna do a full analysis on it. And uh, now we're done. No more grabbing stuff. Do you want another go? Now, you can choose ride again and it'll fast travel you up there. However, we actually need to go into the hole that he just walked in. Because in here we weren't able to traverse before without the flippers. And we weren't able to get the treasure without the hookshot. And we got a piece of heart. Sweet, dude. Now here at the raft ride, you also get a treasure for doing the river rapids, I believe in under 30 seconds, which sounds a little difficult, but there's a few tricks for that. And one of them is you want to do all your sideways angles as much as possible. Go down and then soon as it becomes available, you want to hook shot to the side, hook shot close, Hold straight down, that takes a second there. And you wanna do those sideways shots. Shoot down from here, to the right, down, sideways, left. Ah, uh, I missed that. Okay, that's gonna hurt. Your first time, you're not gonna, you're not gonna go through here swimmingly. But all about those sideways angles, especially that last shot right there. Cause if you don't do that last shot, it takes, a few more seconds. 33 se seconds and we get a secret seashell. Very nice. All right, well that was like 33 seconds and we got a piece of heart. So I wasn't expecting that. After collecting both the secret seashell and the piece of heart, from the guy who runs the race, there's not really much of a reason to do the race again. Although it's within 30 seconds, you can get yourself the treasure. And uh, once you really get your time down, you can actually start to rake up pretty well. But I did forget this piece of heart right here that you can access via raid or race. And that brings us to 15 hearts, which is already more than the original game had. That's great. And right here is an owl statue. Says that I'm far from any secrets. And here's a chest with a red rupee. N not, not the best, but okay. But that last sideways shot is like that real money maker. If you get a bad time, you just don't get any reward whatsoever. And that's kind of whack. Although you didn't deserve it. Now that we are all finished with our river area, we're actually at a very pinnacle point in the game because as you can see, we still have one, two, three more instruments, which make up three of the hearts. There's one full heart container for Dompe's area. There's four pieces of heart left. None of the four we can get right now. Actually, we might be able to get that one, but we're not able to get the full heart container until we have access to the last shrine. So there's not too much of a point in getting the pieces now. So I guess we are on our way to the actual quest place that we're supposed to be going to right now. So now we're gonna make our way to the ancient ruins, which we've been here before for one secret seashell that was located right there. But now we're gonna be making our way to this shrine right here for honestly a pretty tough fight. Keep in mind that for these guys, you could shoot them with a single arrow. They drop a single arrow and great. This makes our way to the South Face Shrine. I think that's the name of this place. Uh, I do recommend saving before entering here, and I think that's one of the first times I've ever said that. Because this guy can be very difficult. You used to just be able to shoot him, and he would die in the old game, but that hasn't worked for me, because he just blocks it. He has an attack that he hops, and it stuns you, and then he walks into you and takes a full heart. So, be careful. What I've seen to work the best is avoid the jump, charge up your attack, and then let loose a spin attack. I don't know if there is another way to hurt him, this is just what has worked best for me. And then he drops his shield, and then you can feel free to shoot arrows at him. And you get this creepy clown looking key, called the face key. One room up here, and there is some story stuff that if you're watching this before experiencing it yourself, I'm gonna cut this out because I don't want you to see it. But after interacting with the statue and getting the key, you can leave and the owl will come talk to you. Hoot, I see you have read the relief. Something about the windfish. It's getting a little suspicious. 
The game's plot point at this point becomes a lot more obvious to the point that enemies like bosses will just tell you stuff. Let's go to the Seashell Mansion. We're gonna hop off the right, head down into the water, and you may have seen these two guys chill in here before. This is our destination. Head down the stairs. Watch out for the Sharky boys. Hook shot over. Head upstairs. Down here is the keyhole for the face key. Wow, that, that erected very quickly. Kind of aggressive. And there we go. Our next episode brings us into the Face Shrine. So if you've been keeping up with the walkthrough so far, we have the Wind Marimba, 28 pieces of heart, which is the most that we can get before the very last dungeon, 44 secret seashells found, which there are six more in the game that give us a lackluster reward, and, uh... I guess, I guess 54 of these. I haven't been paying too much attention to Dompe. But that's gonna be wrapping up this part of our walkthrough, episode 13, where we got the magnifying glass. That was important. If you do not have these items, I highly recommend going back and checking out the playlist, which is right there. Hopefully I timed that up well. Be sure to hit the like button, subscribe if you're new to the channel, turn on notifications, and I'm just gonna hop back and forth until that 20 second timer of the end screen wears out. I could give you like a nice cringy YouTuber outro of, because if you subscribe, then more people are gonna like my beauty tutorial.